Now, the Packers big win, the season opener. Not the only thing people were talking about over the weekend. President Obama's speech on job creations have, was heard around the world. Edward Jones financial advisor Allison Gilman Aquino here now with more on how the markets react. And you could feel the criticism was already there talking about, oh, no, more spending. Right. And I mean, I was watching on Thursday just to see how both sides of the aisle were reacting because mm -hmm. that would have such big play on Friday. Yeah. You know, and President Obama did really create a lot of ripples by wanting to jumpstart job growth in this country with this proposal that will cost about 400, 450 billion dollars. It will be paid for, he says, with a combination of tax cuts and spending increases. Cuts to the payroll tax are the centerpiece of the plan. They're the ones, Sean, that probably have the greatest chance of congressional approval. Now, this year, if you'll recall, all of us are paying 2% less in Social Security taxes. We pay 4.2% out of each of our paychecks versus the 6.2% we've paid in the past. President Obama wants to take that one step further by not only extending that tax cut into next year, but he also wants to enlarge it. The president is looking to cut the payroll tax on Social Security in half to 3.1% for both workers and employers. Right now, only workers are the ones taking advantage of that tax break. And as much as I was just saying the criticism saying that it's too much spending in one direction, the president says, hold on now, this isn't spending. There's a, there's a reason for that. How does he explain it then? Where does it come from, well, the money? Well, he says we're not going to, you know, we're going to pay for it, and then he's going to ask the special congressional panel to okay. come up with a way to uh, find those answers. He wants them to find savings to cover not only that $450 billion, but, you know, they're already working on the $1.5 trillion uh, in budget cuts by the end of the year. The president's plan specifics won't be submitted to Congress until later on this month. At Edward Jones, we know the importance of job growth. We know it's going to take extra measures to spur economic growth, but we believe it would be surprising if the president's proposals don't also raise the current deficit, even if they're paid for with future cuts. So we think you can expect more partisan wrangling. And one thing to think about, Sean, there might be a risk of more jobs lost if the current payroll taxes aren't, uh, you know, made deeper and mm -hmm. also extended into the coming year. So maybe yeah. that is a step in the right direction. And you mentioned the political wrangling, and this mm -hmm. has been this has been the big talk. I mean, the downgrade, the the credit downgrade. Everybody's saying that there's not enough confidence because of the the drama right now between both sides of the political aisle. So. The markets, uh, as a result, we've been reacting with heartburn, watching this back and forth. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, you know, you can't really point the finger at any one person or party right. because it's everybody. Yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of a systemic problem. So I think what we can expect to see, Sean, is a lot more volatility in the future, given that uncertainty about how Washington plans to solve the country's debt problems. Since you can't control the president, you can't control Congress or the European Union, which is another thing that's yeah. still giving us yeah. bits on top of everything else. Mm -hmm. My best advice for you this morning is to control what you can. Low confidence usually means attractive prices for stocks. There are a lot of companies out there reporting increased earnings, companies that are actually raising their dividends. Maybe what you need is a good, solid portfolio review and some rebalancing. Just remember, you are going to continue to hear the volume rising as the next presidential election draws closer, but this may be the best time to fine-tune your selective hearing so that you're not so distracted and freaked out. But one thing hasn't changed at all. Your plans to retire when you want to, ideally, and having enough money saved, Sean, so that you don't outlive your money in retirement. Nobody wants to go back to work at the age of 75. Yeah, not if they can help it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Allison, thank you. If you have any questions that you have for your situation, wake up 6 at Fox 6 now. Dot com. Send those along. We'll pass them along to Allison. Let's head over.